Histogram versus the waveform leads to tonal range versus dynamic range. What's it all mean? It all leads to you being able to control the contrast of what you see with your eye so you can capture it the way you want on your image. Welcome to Pull My Focus, if you're interested in the world of digital filmmaking, where we give you the insight tips you need on how to make great video. As videographers and filmmakers, the image we capture is pretty important because it's the end result. And it could be very dynamic, very cinematic. It also could be very contrasty, very black and white, very muddy, because that's what serves the story or the point of the video uh, that you want to convey to the viewer. So in order to do that, it's a technical and creative craft. We talk about this all the time. And so we need to understand how to technically capture what we want creatively. We're gonna start with contrast. Contrast refers to the levels between the darkest and brightest points of our image. In a shot, we see a range of tones from darkest to brightest with various shades in between. We call this the tonal range of our shot. We can always see and capture the darkest and brightest uh, tones on either end of the scale. That's not a problem. It's the, all the tones in between that we're really concerned about. The wider the tonal range, the more levels of tone in between, and therefore the more detail, particularly as we get closer to the darker end and the brighter end, the blacks and the whites. Now colors have a range of tones, but to simplify this video, we're just gonna focus as if we were shooting in black and white. We're just gonna talk about black, white, and all the shades of gray in between. Tonal range gives us choices to design a shot using contrast. A high contrast shot has a full range of tones from bright highlights to dark shadows, while a low contrast shot has a much shallower tonal range. A bright, low contrast shot of a person on a beach feels very different than a high contrast shot with dark shadows and bright whites and tones of gray in between. One could be a rom-com, the other film noir. But what we see with our eye is just a potential shot until we record it and then it's an image. So the question is, can your camera capture the tonal range of what you see? Dynamic range refers to the luminance range that your camera sensor can record, while tonal range refers to the actual range of tones in the image that you've captured. It's usually expressed in stops, how many stops from black to white uh, your camera is able to record, or in the case of tonal range, and they're actually in your image. Now our eyes are pretty amazing and they have a tonal range of 14 stops. That's pretty high. The C100 uh, Mark II that I'm recording with has a tonal range of 12, which is really good, given the fact that uh, video back, uh, two video cameras back in the 60s on live TV and all those shows uh, was five if you were lucky. There are video cameras today that can record over 14 stops of dynamic range, which is pretty amazing. You may have a video camera with a high dynamic range, but your image is just faded gray wood. There's no whites, there's no blacks, there's just gray tones in between. So that's a low tonal range image. Probably not a problem to record that, and that's fine. You don't have to use up the whole dynamic range of the camera that you're using. That's the image you want, that's great. But what if we have a bright sunlit room with blown out windows, highlights, and dark objects and shadows in the shot? Well, now we have a high contrast shot, a high tonal range. So the question is, can our camera record that range? And if it can't, what do we do? We need to be able to measure the tonal range of our shot the way our camera sees it. And there are two ways we do that, the histogram and the waveform. A histogram measures the total tonal range of an image and is common on DSLRs because it's familiar to still photographers. You may have also used it in Photoshop if you're adjusting your levels. 
It measures the range of tone within the dynamic range of your sensor from left, black, to far right, white, with shades of gray tones in between. Any vertical point on the graph represents the total number of pixels of that tone throughout your image, regardless of where on your image it is. If we can capture the full tonal range of a shot, then our histogram will show tones throughout the middle, but none will touch either end of the histogram. If they do touch either end, then we've hit the limit of the dynamic range of the sensor. We refer to this as clipping, and it means there are levels of white tones above this point that may be discernible to our eye, but not to the sensor. Because this range of white tones falls outside of the dynamic range of our camera, it will be recorded as 100% white. No detail or texture will be visible in the clipped area. In this case, the hot spots are just pure white. The histogram, though easy to use, has its limitations. It only tells us the total tonal value for the whole image. All of the pixels on that image are measured and then put onto that graph, regardless of where in the image they are. So the histogram can't tell us where the hot or dark spots in our image are. In this shot, there are clear hot spots from the sun, but they're hard to see where they are on the histogram because they're small areas. They don't have enough blown out pixels in them to really register on the histogram. You can just see a small point in the bottom right corner. Now to my eye, those spots must be outside the range of my camera, but how to tell? The waveform monitor. You'll find the waveform monitor on most professional grade video cameras, uh, as well as on some external monitors. Its vertical axis reads the light level, zero at the bottom is black, 100 at the top for white. The horizontal axis corresponds with the same axis of the image from left to right, and shows the light levels for a vertical section of it. Here's a shot of a black show card. As I bring in a white card, you can see it move across the waveform. It shows me where on my image that white level is. Now if I bring the card in horizontally, the waveform shows the white card's level as well as the black level above and below it. Remember this shot from earlier with the hot spots? Well, on the waveform monitor, we can see those hot spots clipping at the top. And we can see where they are. It gives us more specific information about the tonal range of specific areas in our image. That's great. But what can we do about that clipping on either end? Our eyes have a wide dynamic range, but we can't see at the extremes at the same time without shifting that range around with the iris of our eyes. For example, trying to see a person silhouetted against a window. Our iris is open up and closed to shift to the different light levels, much like what we do with the aperture of our lens. Open up the aperture and we can see the details of the person because we're letting more light in, but that means the window is blown out. We've shifted the tonal range we're capturing towards the black side of our camera's dynamic range. We're letting the white end clip blow out, losing details there. But if we close down on the aperture, we let in less light, we shift the tonal range towards the white side. We can't see many details of the person, but the window is no longer blown out. Now we're allowing the black end to clip. A shift towards the white end of the tonal range can also be done with ND filters. Instead of shifting the tonal range, inside of our camera, which is a compromise, right? Because either way, we're, we're potentially losing detail on one end or the other. We could change the tonal range in our shot by, say, adding light to the dark areas. Lighting the person against the window lowers the tonal range of our image. We can also bring the bright areas down by adding ND gel or nets to the blown out windows. If there's a bright practical bulb in the shot, we could put it on a dimmer or use a lower wattage bulb. We can also change the tonal range of our set, props and costumes, choosing blue scrubs versus white ones for a hospital scene, for example. A light gray shirt instead of a bright white one. 
there are always ways of adjusting the tonal range of our scene so that it can better fit into the dynamic range of our camera. What we're doing is we're lowering the overall tonal range of the scene that we want to shoot to better fit into the dynamic range of our camera that our camera can record. And therefore, we're able to maintain uh, more detail as we get closer to the blacks and closer to the whites. So you can see that whether you're shooting um, on a staged set or a location, or you're doing run and gun videography, you have a tonal range in front of you that you may want to record. And therefore you have choices in the camera and outside to affect that tonal range to get the image that you want that's gonna work for your project. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, I'm sure you might, leave them in the comments below. We love to do our best to answer those questions.